In the last video, we wrote our period over period calculated fields. In this video, we'll leverage those fields to create a bullet chart to view the growth by product subcategory. First, we'll create a new sheet and drag out product category and product subcategory to the rows. Then we'll drag sales and report quarter out to the column shelf. You can actually build a bullet chart through Show Me, but sometimes the results are unpredictable and you have to rely on Tableau to pick which measure is the bar chart and which measure is the reference line. So I prefer to make them myself. So let's go ahead and close Show Me. We'll make this a little narrower. And then we'll go ahead and sort by our sales and report quarter. So we're going to go to product category, sort. We want to sort descending by a field, which is sales and report quarter, and hit apply. We'll do the same for product subcategory. Descending by sales and report quarter. That looks better. Now to color the lines based on the percentage change in sales, let's just drag sales growth quarter over quarter into the color shelf. We can adjust the scale to better fit the range that we're looking at, although we can really see that binders is a big increase this time compared to the others. So we'll just go edit colors and we'll go to advanced and we'll set our range to be between negative 50% and positive 100% with the center at zero. So now our full color range, anything over 100% will be the same color. Anything under 50% negative would be the same color. And anything in between would be a varying shade. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. Again, if you want your fizz to be colorblind friendly, make sure to not use a green to red scale, maybe blue to orange. But you'll need to include a legend for that. So then to create the bullet chart comparison line feature, we need a reference line to show the comparison quarter. In order to have that metric displayed as a reference line, it needs to already be included in the viz somewhere, or to be a parameter in your workbook. Since our prior quarter sales is not already in there, we need to drag it in. So sales in prior quarter is now on the marks card. And then to add the reference line, right click on the axis that the reference line should be on and click Add Reference Line Band or Box. We're going to add a line, and it's going to be per cell. So here's a good way to think about this. Each of these product categories, furniture, technology, office supplies, those are panes. Each category is a pane. Each product subcategory is a cell. So each bar is its own cell. The entire table is all of this together. So we want individual reference lines for each bar, which would be the per cell scope. We want the line to be the value sales in prior quarter. We want it to be the sum. We don't want a label, and that's generally the case. So we're going to select none. For the line, let's just make it dark. And we won't have any fill above or below, although that's a good indication for other vises of whether something's positive or negative. So then we'll hit OK. And we've got a reference line that shows the previous quarter sales for each bar. Now if we show our report quarter parameter control, we can toggle through the quarters and see that our data changes each quarter. It's working as expected. The second chart we'll make is the quarterly sales trend. Let's go ahead and give this sheet a name before we move on. We'll just call it bar chart. We'll go ahead and make a new sheet. We'll drag out order date to columns and sales to rows. Let's switch the order date from discrete year to continuous quarter to create our trend line. Let's click the color box and color the line gray. This could be good enough. It certainly conveys the information we want to display. But let's add a little flair by using some large circles as data points connected by these lines. Let's control click to drag another copy of sales next to itself. 
If you weren't aware, control, click, and drag is a really handy feature of Tableau that lets you copy a pill you've already placed on your viz. This is something I use every time I use Tableau. Right click the new axis and click dual axis. Now you can see our marks are on their own axes, but they're right over top of each other because they're exactly the same. We want to make sure these stay locked though because we're going to change our line to circles in a minute. So right click on the new axes and click synchronize axis. Now they're locked. Now you'll notice over on the marks card, we have three different items. We have all, sum of sales, and sum of sales two. It's here that we can edit measures on our viz or we can edit them all together. So let's go to the copy of sales that we have on here and we'll change from a line, automatic line, to circle. And let's increase the size a bit. Now we can also highlight the report quarter by dragging out in report quarter to our color just for the circle tap. So now we can see exactly which quarter we're looking at. Let's go ahead and change our colors back the way we want them. Sales should be gray. And in report quarter, if it's not the quarter we're looking at, we want it to be gray. If it is the quarter we're looking at, let's make it black. And then hit apply. The intention here is to make it easy to see which quarter the user is viewing. The gray looks a little dark in order to distinguish it from the black, so let's go ahead and lighten that up. We'll go to the Tableau 20 and choose the light gray there. That should help. We'll do the same for false. Tableau 20, light gray. There, that's a lot better. To recap the process of building a bullet chart, we use the reference line as the bullet mark. We add the bullet dimension to the viz by dragging it out to the detail box or anywhere in the marks card. We can create a reference line by right clicking on the axis and choosing add reference line. And we can select the bullet dimension and desired aggregation from the drop down menus. After the bullet chart, we finished with a time trend chart to contextualize our sales. Now that we've completed all the elements of the dashboard, in the next video we'll work with arranging elements on our dashboard.